Yo, what's up again? Today we're doing something very interesting. I'm going to show you how did this project for a French design studio called Trajectoire Studio. It's based in Paris and at the end Matteo, the sound designer of this video, will break down the sound design for you. So stay tuned and let's get started. Um, but first of all, let me tell you something. At this day, we are more than 2,000 people here on this channel and I never imagined that this could grow so quickly. But look at it, the last video got over 18,000 views and we are going to make Blender the number one software, I'm telling you. But let's get started. We did this project for a French creative studio based in Paris. Unbelievable, but the owner of the studio is a big sports enthusiast and a fan of basketball. And he got his own art collection of basketballs that have unique patterns and designs and I reached out to him and we had a video call and he told me he would need a, a little commercial work for his shop and um, that matches the vibe of his uh, campaign that's called when origin inspires where he designed some basketballs that have those beautiful oriental patterns on it there are lots of different designs so make sure to check it out and maybe get one yourself so based on the video call that we had and the things that we discussed um i i created a little storyboard where I just did some scribbles and a very raw concept of the video to give us an idea and make the whole work process a little bit less chaotic and more professional of course but as you can see scene two three and four didn't make it to the video <laughs> um just because we decided that there could be better ways to visualize things jeremy told me here that we do not play with the ball um, because it's more like an art piece that is supposed to be standing in your living room as a sculpture or something so we decided to make the effects more elegant and slower to underline the beauty of the mixture of basketball culture and the oriental culture in the first shot you can see a fabric which is floating through the air and it's basically done with a wind force field and a normal force field which is dragging the cloth to it and the force field is also animated so it's like a follow behind movement between fabric and force field. In the second shot I tried to make a transition between the cloth and, and the transformation into the basketball and this is done with of course a cloth modifier where I keyframed some of the settings like the pressure scale and the shrinking factor and the moment where you can see the, the seam get stitched on the ball I use a vertex weight proximity modifier that's basically an effect that I kind of explained in less of the videos like the one with the green sphere and the last shot is just a little animation where I where I keyframed the location and rotation and then went into the graph editor and played around with the interpolations and to make the movement fade out as much as possible. And we had a lot of tweakings and redoing stuff and we changed the lighting, we changed the background color, we changed uh, some of the scenes of course. I made a scene that didn't make it to the video, I can show it here, which is also an effect where I used a negative shrinking factor on a specific vertex group and painted in the effect with the vertex weight proximity modifier. And I also did clay renders, I did previs, I did some low resolution renders with 720 pixels. And when you get a commission, it's a process between your client and you. So don't think that it's like, hey, I get a commission, I do what I'm doing and now here's the result and I can't change anything because in the end you want to give the best result possible and in these stages it's often um, discouraging when in the moment you give the best that you can but then is seen by the other person as not perfect but you must let go of the belief that the first strike hits all the time you have the duty to give your client the best result that you can do in most cases the best result can't be achieved with the first strike you know let me talk about the lighting real quick so i always try to create renders with a lot of contrast contrast is very important to make everything more understandable more detailed and more appealing to the eye in 3d because flat shaded images in 3d um often look cheap and also not very interesting yeah so i use a light for the background that don't hits my object i also like to use gobos here and then i use one or two lights with a very low spread to give those contrasts and i position it very on the edge of the object so it hits the object from the side but let's talk about the sound design which is as important as the visuals in commercial work because it makes your visuals so much more understandable it adds so much more magic to your renders and you can't go without sound design so get yourself 
yourself a good sound designer or learn it yourself, I can't do this. But here I completely rely on Matteo, who is making beats and sounds for more than a decade. So he also streams his um, producing process on Twitch. So definitely check him out. And now he will break down the sound design for you. So please listen, that's very important. What's going on, guys? My name is Matteo Renda. I was responsible for the sound design on this project. And today I want to give you a bit of an insight into my workflow and thought process. So we're here inside of Ableton Live 11, which is my preferred DAW to use. I loaded the video in first so I could see what was going on. And when I saw the video for the first time, I immediately knew that I wanted to go for something with a Persian Middle Eastern kind of feel. I found the sample of a Zidane. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. And I layered it with some mandolin and sounds like this. I did a little pitch bend here and then in this next part I chopped the sample a little bit to give it a bit more drive. Then next up I added some brass because I wanted something epic sounding. And this one shot because it kind of sounded like a siren in the stadium. And then we already get to the drums, classic trap drums, just to give it a modern vibe and a modern feel. Then I added some wind to the intro to make it even more atmospheric and some vocals that I recorded and pitched up and just threw a bunch of effects on. Then we have some risers to give more dynamic and the sweep down at the very end to emulate the falling of the ball. Then we have all of these Foley sounds that really make it come to life. We have the cloth in the intro, we have the pumping up effect, we have some sounds of basketball shoes and a net. We have the sewing machine when the whole thing gets sewn together. Just little things like this make a sound design project like this really come to life. So that's it from my side, thanks for watching guys. When I first saw the video with the sound design, I, I completely freaked out. I was so happy, I um, can't describe. So yeah, I mean, that's basically everything I have to tell you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or write me a DM. You can also write a DM to Matteo. So never stop blending, never stop being creative and see you soon, guys.